All right, today's lesson is on position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. Uh, to get started on this, you may want to pause and copy down this graph real quick uh, just before we get started, so I'll assume you pause. Okay, so now that you've got all this copied down, um, let's take a look and go over what this graph actually means. Now, we've got position or displacement here. And we've got time measured in seconds down here. So let's go over and see if we can put this graph into like relation to what this means. Now, what I've done here on this paper is I've just copied down a little number line across here. And I've given this, this is just like an X coordinate system. And I've got an X here of 0, 2, 4, 6, and so forth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the graph. According to the graph, my object starts off at a time of zero. My object starts off at the two meter mark. So my object's going to be a little dinosaur, a little brontosaurus here. So I'm going to put him down here at the two meter mark. And there's my little brontosaurus. All right. So apparently for the first four seconds, my dinosaur remains at two meters. So for the first four seconds, Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four. The dinosaur stays in this exact same location. So if I ask you to find the velocity of this dinosaur, you would say that the velocity of the dinosaur, I'm going to break it up a little bit, use a different color pen. The velocity of my dinosaur is equal to zero meters per second. All right. Now, take a look what happens. 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. After four seconds, the dinosaur begins to move. He moves from the two meter position to the six meter position. So, after four seconds elapse, the dinosaur begins to move. 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, so at the eight second mark, he's now at this point six meters away. Now, did he have a velocity? Well, if you watched him, he did a little whoop, 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 all the way up to the six meters mark. So yes, he had a velocity. When you're taking a look at a position versus time graph, the slope of any line, the slope of any line on that graph of an x versus t graph, position versus time, is going to be equal to your average velocity. So in this problem, if you find this slope of this line, then you've got his velocity. So all we have to do is the average velocity of that line is equal to the slope, the rise over the run. Well, the rise of this line, 2 to 6, is 4 over time elapsed is four seconds, we've got a slope of positive one meter per second. So there's your average velocity. Now there's also something known as instantaneous velocity. And if I ask you to find the instantaneous velocity, oops, my dinosaur fell over. If I ask you to find my instantaneous velocity, the instantaneous velocity at any point along this line would be equal to my average velocity because this is moving at a constant velocity. So at any point along here, if I said, what is his velocity at 6? You would just give me the slope of the line 1. What is his velocity at 5 seconds? What is his instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds? I would say it's 1 meter per second. So now, come over to this one. So look what happens. For the first 4 seconds, he remains stationary. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008. So at 8 seconds, he's at the 6 mark. And then look at what happens. Look at what happens. He reaches the 6, but then he retreats backwards to 4. So after 8 seconds, he retreats backwards. So he gets the 6, but then 9... 10 seconds elapse, he actually backs up to the four position. What is his velocity on this leg? Well, 
Find the slope of the line. What is the slope of this line? Now, you do need to notice that this slope is a negative slope. So my rise is actually negative 2. My run is 2 seconds. So my slope is negative 1 meter per second. So, and if you look, the dinosaur has a negative velocity. This is a vector, which means it has magnitude and direction. So here he is. My dinosaur begins to move in a negative direction at this point. So my negative velocity makes perfect sense. Now, what is the velocity after 10 seconds? Look at what happens. 12, 14 seconds. He never moves again. He stays right here, which gives the average velocity for the last leg of this trip is zero again. Now, sometimes you're asked to find the average velocity of the entire trip. If I want to find the average velocity for this entire trip, all I want to know is his total displacement and his total amount of time for the entire trip. His total displacement is he started, and here we'll do it with the dinosaur, he started at two, he went to 8, excuse me, he only went to 6, backed up to 4. So he started at 2, went to 6, back to 4. Displacement, this is a vocabulary word. Displacement is nothing but where you start, where you stop, compared. Yeah, he went all the way to 6 and back. X, though, is just this. This is all displacement is. His displacement for all that he did was only 2 meters. So his total displacement for the trip was 2 meters. The total amount of time it took him, how much time did it take him to go to 6 and all the way back? It took him a total of 14 seconds to make this entire trip. So, my dinosaur's average velocity is 2 divided by 14.14 meters per second. So there's the average velocity of my entire trip, 0.14 meters per second. All right. Now, take a look at this next graph, and if you need a second, I'll let you uh, copy it down as well. Okay, I want you to notice something about this graph. Notice this curve. Whenever you see an X versus T, a position time graph, where it curves like this, this problem has an acceleration. That's your key that there's an acceleration. How do I know that there's an acceleration? Well, let's take a look at this first line between these two points. What is your slope? of the line between these first two points. The velocity of this first line, uh, let's see, you've got a rise of two over a run of four, so you've got a velocity of one half meter per second. Fine, now take a look at this next part. I'm drawing a tangent line here to the curve. What's the velocity there in this section? Well, the velocity in this section is, call this velocity two, he traveled, it looks like, another two meters yet again, but this time he did it in just two seconds, which means his velocity is doubled. He now has a velocity of one meter per second. Now take a look at this last section. Look at the steepness of the slope on this last part. The velocity in this third section, his rise this time, four to eight meters, so he's got a four meter displacement in a time of only two seconds. So his velocity for this last section is two meters per second. Oh, and can I fix something? All these velocities should be meter per second squares. Pardon me for that. Anyway, so look at these acceleration. Half meter per second. Ah. Not square, just uh, just meter per second. Pardon me. No, I'm not starting this video over. Sorry, students. So your velocity is a half meter per second, one meter per second, two meters per second. There's your velocities on this graph.
Take a look. His speed is doubling. A changing speed means we've got an acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but rate of change in velocity. There's your definition for acceleration. So now let's take a look at objects undergoing acceleration. Once again, sorry about those misplaced squares. My acceleration was on the brain, I guess. And let's get out another set of graphs. So lo and behold, here is another. Well, I'm going to probably just mess everything up at this point. Here is a, another graph. I want you to look at this graph. This is a velocity versus time graph. Now, slope of a velocity versus time graph, that is acceleration. So any slope on this graph is going to be acceleration. So now you've got to look at this. Here you've got an object. Let's say it's the dinosaur. This problem starts, he's not at position 6. This means he's running 6 meters per second. So here's the dinosaur. And he runs at constant speed of 6 meters per second for the first 4 seconds. <laughs> now, look what happens after 4 seconds. He goes from 6 meters per second to 10 meters per second. So for 2 meters per second, <laughs> he speeds up. Now look what happens. After eight seconds, he's a big dinosaur. Look at the guy. He's got a big old belly. He gets out of breath. So what does he do? He starts slowing down. Now this does not mean that he ever runs backwards. He just slows down from 10 to 4 meters per second. So he starts off running 6 meters per second. Dun, 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 I'm a dinosaur. Then he speeds up. Dinosaur, 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 dinosaur. Then whoo. I'm a tired dinosaur, and he slows down. He never comes to a stop. He just slows down to four by 12 seconds. So what is the acceleration of the dinosaur? Well, what's the slope of this first line? There is no slope. It is a constant six meter per second velocity, so your acceleration is zero meters per second squared, and this time the square belongs. So what's the slope of this line? Well, acceleration would be equal to, we've got a positive 4 rise, and we've got a 4 second run. So we've got a 1 meter per second square acceleration for that leg. Now look at the last part. Your velocity goes from 10 down to 4. So he loses 6 meters per second. So you've got negative 6 meters per second over a run of 4 seconds, which gives you a negative 1.5 meter per second square. Now this is where a lot of students will think that the dinosaur started running backwards at this point. He never started running backwards. The dinosaur just slowed down. Now if this graph were to... Let's say that this graph, I'm going to grab a ruler. Say that this graph were to continue like this. And let's say up here that we brought our scale down. Kind of making a mess here. Negative 2. What does it mean now? Well, if this was our graph... It means the dinosaur slowed down, slowed down, and at this point, the dinosaur's velocity be zero. So the dinosaur actually slows to a stop, and then the dinosaur, look, at this point, his velocity is negative two meters per second, which means at this point, he actually stops and the dinosaur begins to run backwards, and then negative four, and so forth. He'd get faster and faster. Who knows, maybe he turns around and runs backward. Maybe he saw a bigger dinosaur. I don't know. But there's the basics of this. Now, I did throw in one more thing, and that's to talk about what else can be found. 
you see velocity is equal to displacement over time. So if you s take a look, solve this equation for displacement, time times velocity is displacement. Which means if you take the time times velocity, that tells you displacement. Which means in this case, the area of any of these lines is going to give you a displacement. So, for example, the area underneath this line, 6 times 4, that means that the dinosaur traveled 24 meters during the first leg of his trip. Now, how do you find the area underneath this shape? Well, I've been good to you, and I've already broken this picture up. And again, this is the same graph from up here. I just redraw it. I added this one line though, just to show you that when you have this shape, you have to find the area of the triangle and the area of this line box down here. Now this box down here is still 6, is 4 by 6, so this is 24 meters. The area of the triangle is 1 half, 4 times 4 which comes us out with, for some reason that turned into a 14. So this comes out to 8. So we've got a total of 24 and 8, which means your displacement was 32 meters for this section. And then you ought to pause this for a second and find the displacement of this last section over here. Hmm. Are you done yet? Well, let's see what you got. You should have split up, found the displacement for the square. So find the area of the square, and this would be 4 times 4. So this is a 16-meter displacement down here. And then 1 half the base height of this triangle. The 4 times the height of this triangle is 6. So 2 times 6 is 12. So we've got 26, 20, we've got a total of 28 meters of displacement for the last section in this triangle. All right, well, I hope that gets you a little bit of start on the velocity times graphs and position time graphs. Again, the important thing is just know what your slopes are going to tell you and know what your area can tell you on the velocity versus time graph. All right. I guess my thing to use since I've dropped the pin is good luck.